Welcome to part three of Inside the Wubble. I'm your host as always, Jay Rob. I am here with a good friend of mine, Gabby Williams. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries, no worries. It's always a pleasure, it's always a pleasure. So Inside the Wubble is pretty much a look at what the life is like inside the Wubble. I've done, I've done um, Nafisa Collier, I had Bridget Carlton on, this will be, this is your show now. I'm, I'm glad to have you on the platform. So Gabby, how is, how is the Wubble? It's, it's not bad at all. I think some negative media, you know, it's been mm -hmm. getting a lot of negative media attention, but it's actually, uh, I'm pretty impressed with how the league has been able to, to put this together so safely. And, you know, we haven't had, any outbreaks, knock on wood, right. and everyone seems to be well accommodated. So it's been pretty good. Do you get that big AU tournament feel being in the wobble? It feels more like college, okay. to be honest. Like, I mean, we went to college together and right. you remember how easy it was to just go down to, to practice every day. You literally walk from your apartment, right. not too far. If you want to see your friends on another team, they're right, right next door. Exactly. Like, you was always in our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. It's, it's kind of that kind of, it reminds me of college a lot. Uh, no doubt. I figured, I figured. So having been in the bubble all the time, I know you get a lot of time to catch up on Netflix and Hulu and whatever shows you get to binge watch. You and I are both very avid anime watchers. We've been for years now. Any new anime that you're watching inside the bubble? Mm -hmm. What have you been checking out? Uh, so I actually hooked Azure onto Attack on Titan. Great so anime. that's been nice to have finally have someone else watch another uh, anime. But right now I'm on um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh. Yeah, so that's been good. And then uh, I'm also doing Hunter x Hunter right now too. So those Hunter are, Hunter I always usually dope. watch, yeah, Hunter Hunter is cool. So I just, uh, I usually start two. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I'm out of the camera. No, no I usually worries. two out of So those are the two that I'm on now. I... I loved Hunter Hunter. Um, how far are you in the anime right now? Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I think I'm like almost done with season one. Mm -hmm. And Hunter Hunter, like I, I just got to like okay. episode two. Like, okay, I'm okay, not far at all. So Hunter yeah. Hunter is good. So don't I'm, say anything. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to say anything about either. I've I've seen both animes. Um, Hunter Hunter, I really like. I think the ending may disappoint you. I'm sorry to tell you. Mm. And then um, I'm never, I've never been really the biggest fan of JoJo. Um, a lot of people do like it though. It's very like either you really like it or some people just don't. I'm kind of like on the fence. I'm indifferent because it is good. It is a really good anime. Yeah. But then I think as the, the multiple seasons go, that's when I kind of like, I don't know about it. But those are some really good animes to watch and have pretty big fan base. Hunter Hunter, I wish they would actually reboot, like start again. Oh, yeah. I think it has so much potential. Like they did with Full Metal? Yes, yes. But see, Full Metal, the thing about Full Metal is That'd be cool. the, the original Full Metal, they stopped it. Um, they had stopped it before the manga had ended. Before the manga finished. Yeah. So yeah. after, so Brotherhood is actually like the real interpretation of the manga. And it was great for my right. Mrs. Greg. So, Chicago Sky, you guys are four and one, four and one right now at this point in the bubble, looking like one of the best teams in the WNBA. Definitely competing favorites for a championship. So, from the outside watching you guys play, it seems like you guys play so free. It's like you would never know that you were drafted. You've only been in your third year. The Shields is only in her third year. Uh, Azure is also in her third year. You got Quiggs, Dawson, uh, Vandersloos. You got some real vets who have been in the league for multiple years now. But you guys just look like you've played together for such a long time. You guys play so free. You feed each other the ball. And I think the, the one thing I admire most is the unselfish basketball of the team. It, it, if you watch, like some weeks, it's Azure as the player of the week. You've been player of the week. It, it always seems to fluctuate. Whoever kind of has the hot hand, whoever got, has it going, you know, you guys just make it work and everybody finds the basketball and make plays. I think watching you guys play, to be honest, this is just me being personal opinion. You guys have been the funnest team to watch so far in the Wubble. Um, how could you attribute you guys' like synergy as a team? 
I think it's one just our system that nothing, our system isn't designed for one for the ball to go through one player all the mm-hmm. time or for us to look to someone like you said it's been a different whatever player of the game but uh I think that's just what it is. We have different weapons mm-hmm. and any of us can kind of go off at different times depending on how the game is going and what the matchups are. And then it also helps having, you know, the best point guard in the league. Right. Uh, able to, to <laughs> like that, that's a huge <laughs> nah, right. reader to it too. Uh, who's able to see the floor so well and read everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's been fun. It's been, every win has felt really collective and it's right. been really fun. What would you say, like, if there's one thing unique about the Chicago Sky as a team, what would you say? It doesn't have to be, like, on the court. It's just about the group. You know, every team that you've been on, you, mm-hmm. you know, you, every team has a personality. You know what I'm saying? And if you could say, like, what's the personality like or one thing about your team, what would it be? I think our chemistry is the best in the league. No, I think I know. I know it is. Right. I think we genuinely enjoy mm-hmm. being around each other more than any other team I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's something really special. And I don't know right. if any players ever experienced this in their careers. Right. So, and it's something that we embrace. We know how right. good it is and it helps that we can say something to each other on the court. We can get on each other, but we know it's completely coming out of a place of support and love and, and camaraderie. I could definitely attest to that too, just because last year at WNBA All-Star, even though all of you didn't make the all-star team, the, the majority of the team was still there in support of everybody. Like, the family culture you guys got going in Chicago, like, it's awesome. I love it. So, Gabby, mm-hmm. you've extended your game this year. You take a lot more three-pointers now. You're, you're making them at an efficient clip. Um, talk to me about how you've extended your range where like what has that been like how many shots have you put up is it confidence is it repetition <laughs> it's it's both i mean when i was in france uh i was with my my shooting coach in france mm-hmm. the whole year and we were getting up at least you know hundreds of reps before and after <laughs> practice just getting my my rhythm right mm-hmm. and my confidence up but the, i think the main thing for me was just learning how to be okay with missing Right. Uh, Because that was my thing. I never shot threes because I didn't want to miss. So I never cared to get better at it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my first couple weeks in France, I was oh for whatever. And then I started having games where I'm having like five or six or whatever Mm -hmm. it is in a quarter. Right. And, but I had to miss. I had to miss a lot to get there. So Mm -hmm. uh, I think that part of my game mentally, it's helped me a lot mentally uh, on the court as well with other aspects of my game. That's awesome. I think one thing too, like having watched you play for so long, um, I think you getting a, having this efficient three point shot makes you unguardable, just because you know you can. You're probably more more athletic than I would say about ninety five percent of the league. Um, you can put the ball on the ground. You can see the floor. You're a great defender, and then just adding this to your game is just like holy cow! Like what can't you do? You know what I'm saying? So it is awesome to see like. A lot of players that I've had the opportunity to watch over the year, it's awesome to just see how you guys just keep growing and developing and just, you know, taking not only say risks, but opening like new doors in your game. You know what I'm saying? I think it's awesome to watch. So I've talked about social uh, social justice injustices that have happened across the country and even across the world with a lot of the people that I bring on my show. Um, and, you know, I always said, that the WNBA is the standard in any type of social reform, social justice. Like you guys have had the one of the best. Because before everything has happened at this point, this the WNBA has been a front runner for speaking out against what's right for a long time. Like this is not a new trend, and. I think, you know, just now, I feel like a lot of other leagues have taken, you know, you guys for an example. You know, you guys have probably helped inspire a lot of what the other leagues are doing. Um, Just recently, you know, a lot of photos surfaced of a lot of players in WNBA wearing Vote Warnock t-shirts. And obviously, for people who don't know, um, he's running against Kelly Loeffler who is actually a, what, a part owner of the Atlanta Dream, which is, like, the irony of all this. And she's been... Well, she was. She no longer is. Right. She was. Right. Um, And she's been in opposition to Black Lives Matter. And it's, like, for for me, it's, like, it's so backwards because 
you, even obviously she's not a part-time owner anymore, but having being ownership of a team in a league that has multiple women of color, like it, it it's it, it's so backwards to me. Um, but you were one of the WNB players that I saw wearing a vote or not shirt. How important is it to you to spread the importance of voting to, you know, the people who view your platform? Well, it, like like you said, for her to to be associated with a league that's predominantly black and, and women and then not support us as people just kind of really speaks to what the sports realm is right. uh, and how it uses and it dehumanizes black athletes to right. just sources of entertainment. Right. right. But we're not people to them. So we don't we shouldn't get involved in politics mm -hmm. because we're not seen as people to them. Then we right. were once three fifths of a per, of a person. You know what I mean. Right. So for us, we we knew that she was using us as uh, wanted to use us as political pawns when she yeah. made that statement, not supporting Black Lives Matter. Uh, so we wanted to show, you know, one the importance of voting and why we need to and yeah. to expose this kind of thing, just these kinds of things going on in our Senate right now. Mm -hmm. But also we went with Warnock because, I mean, he's someone who really reflects what we believe in and, and mm -hmm. his platform really speaks to everything that we support. Mm -hmm. And so to have someone like him in office is, would be incredible for, for people who look like us. Right. I, I, I completely, 100% agree. And I think too, is like that whole idea with Loeffler is like, it's that whole idea of like, just shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, we're not, you're not, a, if you're an athlete, you're not allowed to have as much of a voice. And I think one thing that kills me too is, you know, people say, you know, athletes make all, make money and have sponsorships. Why are they complaining about things that they're probably not accustomed to? And I'm like, to be honest, being black, getting treated, getting treated disfairly because you're black has nothing to do with how much money you make. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like being black, like we were, this is how we were born. Like this is what we face on a day to day. It has nothing to do with the financials. Um, so the Chicago Sky, you guys have this niche called, called Sky Takes Action. Um, so what was the origin of that and how did that come about that the team created its own initiative and is obviously it's gaining attention and people are supporting it. But where were the where did the origin start where as an organization you guys decided like this is what we want to do? Well, like you mentioned, there's always this, uh, you know, we hear the shut up and dribble, we hear the stay out of politics, we hear that, you know, stay in your lane, whatever it is. Uh, uh, but as, there's no separation when it comes to being a basketball player and being black. Uh, although there, we may be seen by people who tend to be the owners of these types of things, right. um, they tend to see us as, as, you know, separable identities. Like right. we're only athletes, but we're not black while we're athletes. We're not black while we're on the court right? right but as soon as we step off the court we can be treated however we want it doesn't mm -hmm. matter our opinion shut up you're not you're only supposed to be what right. we want you to be and so us we didn't want to be used like that we didn't want to mm -hmm. be used as a distraction when mm -hmm. we came to the bubble we didn't want to be people's outlet to you know everything going on in the world we mm -hmm. said no we if we're going to come to this bubble we're going to make our statement and we're going to show that this these things are not separable our, mm -hmm. our identity is being black women like right. our lives are at danger. We're seeing people who look like us being oppressed and murdered in mm -hmm. cold blood every day and not receiving right. justice. Right. So for us, it was really important to do something as a team that took action and that made this, if you're going to turn the WNBA, you're going to, you're going to hear black lives matter. You're going to hear about what we're doing because right. for us, this isn't just a political statement or a yeah. hashtag. This is our livelihood. Right. Right. No doubt. Like I a hundred percent, hundred percent agree. I think though, I think one thing too is, that being black like i feel like sometimes people just don't understand that being black is just not it what i'm trying to say is i don't think like people understand that being black it's not just like like you said it best like we are in danger like us as a culture like we can't do things the way everybody else does them because there's already like whatever this deep rooted fear or stigma about who we are as people or this deep rooted hatred, to be honest, about the skin complexion, the things that we're capable of doing. I think it's horrible. But at the same time, I think the best thing is we're starting to we're starting as a people to really push back 
in masses and we're gaining allies you know what i'm saying other races and other people who may look who may not be black are starting to realize like look a spade is a spade and what's wrong is wrong and we all just kind of need to push to help change that how for you how does it feel well, to be, i think oh no go ahead go ahead i'm sorry uh, well yeah i think we're living in the age of information yeah especially us us gen z kids right as you are as well we've always grown up being able to google everything right and search our our answers on the internet which before you know of course we grew up learning not history but white mm. history everything right. we learned white science we learned white mathematics we learned right. white english you know mm -hmm. and now that we live in this age where we have all the information in the world accessible to us we're able to question everything yeah that, that we've been brought up so to your point i think that's why we see this movement taking off the way it is now because right. we know why yeah. at first we knew things were wrong but we couldn't get to the root of it we couldn't get to the infrastructure and now mm -hmm. we know how we can make change right i i i, I perfectly i get it like um i don't know if you know this i don't know if you've talked about it uh privately but I actually run this organization called Four Chains Bergen County, which is uh, a group that I started actually out of frustration. Like this happened like right after George Floyd. Um, I got on Twitter, I made a burner account. I put Four Chains Bergen County. I've amassed almost a following of like 400 people in probably, I got like 400 followers in like two, three, four days. It was like really quick. Um, but through this, like we protested, we've spoken out about what does need to be fixed in our communities and in the country. But um, I got invited to actually speak to the um, the uh, the at the police academy, the new recruits that are going to be police officers. And um, at first, I was a little um, was a little weary about it. Um, I just didn't know because I was, I was personally invited by the chief deputy of my town. And um, I also was like, I don't know if this is like a setup or if this is something that I didn't, I just didn't know all the information at the time. But then I kind of realized like this type of uncomfortable conversation you can have with a bunch of people in law enforcement, a bunch of things they may not really want to hear or are ready to hear. If you have like the opportunity or the platform into doing that, then you gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like as a black man, as a black woman, we have to do our part in this fight. This is no one group fight. Everybody has to do things in their respective platforms and respective communities to try to fight this change. So like I, I hands down understand like where you're coming from. Like I think Right. That was the, that was the whole idea of behind this guy takes action thing, you know, mm. was like you said, whatever you have, give it. If, yeah. you, if it's just listening, if it's just talking, if it's just reading, mm -hmm. do it. And that was right. the whole point of uh, creating the sky takes action was okay. I know that my teammates are riled up. I yeah. know that our fans are riled up and everyone wants to make change, make change, but they don't know where to look. Right. So when we're giving you a place to look, we're giving you organizations to donate to. If you can't donate, then you can research how to volunteer. You can research just how to listen. You can mm -hmm. just start. And that's the whole point of this action is it's not just a, a transactional thing where, hey, we raise money, we give it, and that we're mm -hmm. good. No, this is going to have longevity, and we're going to build off this and, right. and just help those who want to help and be allies. Mm -hmm. or, if, or if you're Black, you know how to, how to uh, be more help in your community. This mm -hmm. is that way to access that information. Yeah, no, nah, no doubt. Like that's so important too because some people really just don't know and everybody just needs access to information i think that i think what you guys are doing as an organization is impeccable how does it feel for you though to have not only be a part of a league that fights for women that look like you and men that look like me but you have an, a, a team the organization you play for is also behind you how does how, what does that feel, what does that feel like I mean, it's one of the most rewarding things ever. And I feel like putting this all together has been really like mentally exhausting yeah. and really difficult, but it's so rewarding when I get to hear like from our white majority owners that they mm. have our backs on this or from seeing like how motivated uh, my white teammates are uh, to be a part of this too. And there's mm. no separation. And then 
you know, for us as, as the black teammates, it means so much to know that we're, we have this safe space where there's no divide amongst these yeah. issues and we can do this and, and feel supported on it. Because right. either way, we decided that we're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but it does make it right. a lot easier knowing that we do have the support not only from our teammates, but from the league as well. And being able to wear wear these Vote Warnock shirts and have the league post about right. it and stuff and, in, and you further extend our platform, you know, it just adds so much to our movement. That's awesome. So transi- transitioning, um, you are avid. At, uh, I follow you on TikTok. I know you have some some of the funniest creative TikToks, um, but the U.S. is possibly banning TikTok. Um, but it seems like Instagram is coming out with this thing called Reels, which allows you to do pretty much essentially what we're doing on TikTok, but on Instagram. And this is again Instagram destroying something, another app that we love because they destroyed Vine. Exactly. They, destroyed they did TikTok. it once with Vine. Right. They didn't Snapchat. And now it seems like they're coming after they're coming after TikTok <laughs> next. Coming after TikTok. <laughs> so do you plan on transitioning from TikTok TikTok to the new TikTok of Instagram? One, if this is true, uh, I think this is more than just deleting an app, but it's yeah. our. Oh, I, I, I I'm agree. Not going to, I agree. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it obviously has political motivation behind it. The yep. fact that Gen Z kids yep, yep. are unifying and mobilizing through this app. So I yep. want to make that clear that everyone knows why this is being banned. Oh yeah. I so know. I don't know. I think I'll do the same thing with uh with Vine. I mean, rest in peace. I rest was quoting Vines today to my millennial roommates and they had no idea what I was saying. Mm. <laughs> but uh I I do. I mean, it, I've gone through it once, so I guess I'll have to go through it again if it does happen. Yeah, I think rest in peace to TikTok too. I'm definitely won't be on the on the reels on Instagram. I like TikTok because it, it's like a, it's it's its own private thing. I don't I don't want it on. I don't want to be on Instagram. Right. Yeah. So I, I definitely could understand that. Um, and finally, we gotta evolve with the times. Nah, right. We gotta evolve with the times. <laughs> it happens. So the last thing I want to ask you um, is you're inside this bubble you play a game like every other day you have film practice you got a very pretty solid schedule um and i know you probably think about you know getting out of the bubble and what would you wish you would be doing right now if you had a little bit more freedom so if you were outside the bubble what is the one thing you miss most about your freedom or one thing you miss doing a person to be seen just any activity well, one, I miss my cat more than anything in the whole entire world. Shout and out that's, HB. That's just, shout out to HB. I miss her. I love her. And not being her in this bubble has been awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the league is wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for everything the league has done. Right. But this, they're, you know, they know they're wrong for that. So I'm going to just say <laughs> it on the podcast. Um, they're not letting us spring pets. But I also just like it does get a bit claustrophobic and Mm -hmm. like my roommates were talking about how we just like to go to the grocery store or Mm -hmm. go shopping i i would just love to just go driving in my car yeah blasting music Music. um it's the little things there's nothing really huge that i miss but just the little freedoms those that those time that time alone that you have because now we all have roommates again right 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 so yeah, no, I get that. I, I 100%, I 100% understand that. But before I let you go, Gabby, I do want to say this. As somebody who has become like a, a local politician and not really a, more like a local activist in my community, and as somebody who has been fighting for the rights of people that look like us, um, and, and I'm be honest, it has been exhausting because you mm-hmm. have to have, I've had to have conversations with um, politicians and you know, law enforcement, and I'm a lot of the time. I feel like I'm, I'm, in, it feels like I'm trying to connect the world to Black America because everybody mm-hmm. seems so disconnected from it, and it is exhausting. But I do want to say, like, as somebody who has watched you for a number of years now, you've always been outspoken when it comes to speaking up about what's right. Like this, George Floyd and the the incidents that have happened this wasn't the start for you. You've been doing this. I've watched you consistently talk about racial injustice, sexism, homophobia, all the hateful, divisive things that we are falling victim to in this country. You stand 
for something. You don't fall for anything. Um, and I just want to say thank you because it is important. And as somebody who has such a large platform, thousands of followers, people looking at you all the time, you do, you're not afraid to be unapologetically you and speak up for what's right, even if it means some people may not support you anymore, you don't care. We need people like you, Gabby. So thank you. And I appreciate you coming on my platform. That means the world. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you so much again. I'll see you later. Of course.